Welcome back everybody to your second video in your JavaScript tutorial series. At this point, you probably understand what JavaScript is used for, mainly for websites and backend and even mobile apps. But you may or may not have ever developed in JavaScript. But by the end of this video, you're going to have a working application and you're going to have your development environment all set up for the rest of this series. So I got to give a special shout out and thank you to our sponsor, Dev Mountain. If you really want to take your development career to the next level, get a really good job in the industry, Dev Mountain is the place for you. They offer in-person coding boot camps and web development, iOS, user experience, and even quality assurance. They also offer online versions if going in person just might not work out for you right now. But what might make it a lot easier for you guys is they actually offer housing at no additional charge. So if you're not around one of the areas where they're offering coding camp in person, you might want to look into their housing option. And if you mention I sent you their way, they'll give you 250 bucks off. So psh, it's basically free. <laughs> okay, it's probably not free, but... It's a, it's a much better deal. You can watch tutorials all day, but it's really not going to mean anything until you put that to use, which is what you're going to get in Dev Mountain. So check them out. I'll leave a link for you in the description. So let's get started by writing our first JavaScript application. And this is one of the most easiest things to do. The reason it's so easy is because we need something to run our JavaScript. And everybody has one of these programs installed, a web browser. So inside of a modern web browser, they have a JavaScript engine. So this is Google Chrome. I also recommend Firefox, but you can use Safari or Edge or Internet Explorer. <laughs> the easiest way to get started with Java is go up here in the web address and type in JavaScript and then a colon. And then you can just say something like alert, put some parentheses, and then inside of these parentheses, put two double quotes. Inside of the two double quotes, put a string, hello world, just like this. Now, the syntax, that's going to take some time to get used to if you're new to it, but just type it in just as is, and it should work. Press enter, and you can see we get a message saying hello world. Boom, you just created your first JavaScript program. You didn't have to install nothing. That's what makes JavaScript so cool because you make something in JavaScript, more than likely 95 or plus percent more of the world is going to be able to run your application. That's a huge plus, but the downside is they don't have to go download something new. So a lot of these people are going to be running your JavaScript code in like ancient browsers and <laughs> crappy smartphones or video game consoles. <laughs> Basically, with JavaScript development comes the consequence that we have to be able to consider our application to be ran on any of these devices. And throughout the series, we're going to be talking about some of the ways to make sure our code works across browsers and across systems. So as you get into some of the more advanced JavaScript capabilities, all of those are not necessarily going to be supported across all the browsers. So I'm going to do what I can to, to call those things out and tell you what you need to do to get it working. All right, but enough blabbering, Caleb. Just shut up and make an app. <laughs> So we typed an app up here in the address bar, but that's not the ideal way of developing a JavaScript application. That would literally be torture. <laughs> so eventually we're going to switch to a code editor or a text editor or an IDE, whatever you prefer. I'm going to go with something called Visual Studio Code. So this is Visual Studio Code. If you guys have heard of Visual Studio, it's different. It's lightweight, easy to download and get started. So this is what I would recommend, but you guys are free to use whatever you want, whether you want to use Emacs, Atom or Sublime or Notepad++ or even Vim, whatever you decide. <laughs> All right, the other thing you guys need to know is that inside of a browser, there are tools to make developing in JavaScript a lot easier. So if you go to any web page and let's just go to a new tab page just so it's nice and clean. If you right click and click inspect, well, this is going to bring up a bunch of junk. And one of these buttons in here is console. So if you click the console tab, you should be able to type stuff in here just as if we're writing a JavaScript program. So for example, we could say alert and do the same exact thing. We press enter and it pops up and says hello world. So that is another way you can test out JavaScript. This is good for that REPL feel, which is read, eval, print, loop. So basically, the web browser is going to read what we're saying. It's going to evaluate it. It's going to print the result. And then it's just going to keep doing that. So I'm opening Visual Studio Code now to write our first application in a file. So I'm going to click Open Folder and then find some pretty place to make a folder and then open that folder inside of this editor. All right, so I'm just going to put this in full screen because this is what we're going to be focusing on for a couple minutes. We can exit out of that welcome. 
because now we have this JavaScript folder open over here. So the first thing you're going to need is an HTML file. HTML defines the structure of our website. If you don't know HTML, it's really not that big of a deal. It's fairly easy to pick up. I don't recommend you go watch an HTML series unless you want to bore yourself to death. <laughs> so just, just follow along and I'm not gonna do anything too crazy. So index.html. You can hit that little plus button if, if you didn't see me do that. That's how you create a new file. If you can never remember the structure of an HTML file, just look up HTML shell and it'll give it to you right there. So copy that and paste that right here. So the first thing we have is this doc type with this exclamation mark HTML. It just tells the browser, hey, we're working with an HTML file. Then we have this HTML element. Inside of that, we have the head and we have the body. Inside of the head is where we put our metadata and titles and all kinds of extra stuff that isn't actually going to show up on the screen, but it's still important. Now you can write JavaScript inside of this HTML file. And if you wanna know how to do that, go ahead and look it up. But I'm just gonna to jump to the recommended way, which is an own JS file. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually put that in a new folder. We're gonna call it JS. And then in this folder, we're going to create a file. I'm just gonna call it youtube.js. It has to end in a .js because it's a JavaScript file. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna put that alert we did earlier inside of here. And we'll typically end this with a semicolon. So as we're developing, we're going to want to run this in the browser to see if it's working and to test things. And in order to do that, we need to open this index file inside of a browser. So over in your Explorer, you can right click and say reveal in finder. That's gonna open up the file and you can double click it if it has a little Chrome icon or you can right click and say open with. So open and wow, that is pretty. So the first thing you're probably gonna notice is that nothing is happening. And the reason nothing is happening is because we have this JavaScript file and we have this HTML file, but they're not connected in any way. Anytime we want to run our JavaScript, we need to tell the HTML file to include it in our page. Now I'm going to do this right before the closing body tag. So where it says caret forward slash body, right before that is where I'm gonna include our JavaScript. And the way you do this is you put script source equals and then double quotes, js slash youtube.js. So the js slash that's the folder and then youtube.js is the file. And then we put the closing caret and it'll automatically populate this closing tag. Alternatively, you can put this in the head. I prefer to put it at the end of the body. The reason is if we wanna reference stuff in our HTML, it just makes more sense to put it at the bottom of the body so all of that stuff's already rendered. And if you're really curious about all that stuff, you could look up the best practices. You could also look up loading JavaScript files asynchronously using async, but this is going to work for most of our purposes, so I'm gonna leave that right here. Now, anytime you make a change, you need to make sure you save all your files. In this code editor, if there's changes that need saved, there will be a little dot. So I always make sure that that dot is not there, and then I'll open the browser, and you have to do a refresh. So refresh, and then you'll get the pop-up. So there you go, guys. That is your first JavaScript program. <laughs> Obviously, I didn't teach you how to do anything except set it up, but that is probably the, the hardest part. No, I'm just kidding, guys. It gets much harder, so be sure to stick around. If you've enjoyed this content, please be sure to subscribe as well as check the links in the description. Thank you, guys, and I'll see you in the next video. Don't quit, guys. Seriously. Most people are going to quit here. <laughs> I'm telling you guys, persist through the series. You will not regret it.